Sounds good. Uh, ben, I guess the first question is just what made Maryville College the right choice in terms of you know taking the head coaching gig and and whatnot. Yeah, to me, it was pretty. It was a slam dunk. It was an opportunity to be in a league that I'm familiar with, in a part of the country that I'm familiar with. I'm from Johnson City. It's an hour and a half from my parents at a school that is has a great reputation and has a lot of football tradition. There's not there's not many schools that are have played football at the Division three level in the South for as long as Maryville's played. We're talking about over 100 years. There's only four, right? It's it's Center, Maryville, Rhodes, and Sewanee are the only ones that have done it. And so that makes it really attractive because there's a lot of support. When you've played football at a school that long, it's really important. And when you're a football coach, it's important to work at places where football's important. That, that makes your job a lot more fun. Obviously, you from being coming from center, you've been able to play the Scots the last mm -hmm. few years. I guess what's your what's your impression of the program that you're kind of taking over right now, having played them the last few years? I will tell you, it's just like what I told the uh, the players, some of them on the interview, what I told the coaches today in the uh, in our staff meeting. This is not a complete rebuild. It's not a down to the studs because. There are players on this team that played in the playoffs the last time we played in the playoffs at center, right? Now, I wouldn't be working here if there were not some things that needed to be addressed and some changes that need to be made too. So we have to address them and we have to change them. But there is talented players here going even back to when I was at Huntington for five years before going to center. We always had very intense and very competitive games with Maryville and they always had really talented players it played really hard. It was very physical football games. It was, I would tell our guys, I would tell them all the time, tell them at center, would tell them at Huntington, when you're playing Maryville, you better strap your chin strap on. It's going to be a very physical game and you'll know what college football is after the game. My hope is that everybody that plays this from here on out says the exact same thing. You'll know what a college football game is after you play it and you'll know exactly what that looks like. So I think there's a lot of talent here. I think it's, it's a young team. Are you do a roster assessment? There are 20 juniors and seniors on the team, right? Of 103 or four that have reported right now, that's 80, at least 80 to 85 guys on the team that are freshmen or sophomores that don't really know what college football is that have to learn, right? So that's exciting and a little bit scary because they don't know. And But it's our job as coaches to teach them and to make sure that they're having the experience that they deserve, which is learning, learning how to be committed, right? Learning about sacrifice, being together, working as hard as they can, and having a brotherhood and a family, graduating and seeing value in their degree, and winning a lot of football games while we do it. It's obviously a group that has never gone through anything like this in terms of coaching, a coaching change. I guess in that team meeting, what was your message? And I guess, how do you feel like they reacted to it? Well, that was the, the guys I talked to now, this was on, in an interview process. So I'm mm -hmm. excited to see what the, okay. what the, the team meeting reaction is going to be like tonight. We're going to meet with them at 730. Uh, so I am excited. I do know this, the three or four guys that I knew on the roster from recruiting have already FaceTimed me or called me or texted me and seem to be very excited. They've not done one practice with me yet, so that may change. <laughs> but they all knew my – they had my cell phone number, and they all seemed really excited, which that gave me a lot of energy. That gave me a lot of energy and really excited me, and, and I'm looking forward to getting to work with them. What are your plans in terms of staff? Will you have meetings with, you know, guys who are already there, and do you also plan on bringing your own guys and of, of that sort? I think it'll be a mix. You know, we've got some good coaches on yeah. the staff. We've got some good coaches on the staff and some guys that I've gone up against for a long time that have been really good coaches and always put products on the field that were really talented and played hard and played intelligently. I respect that a lot, right? Now, obviously, when you come in as a new coach and there are changes that need to be made in order to enhance the culture of the program, you need some of your own guys that view the world the way you do, right? None of the coaches on the staff right now, just like none of the players, came here to play for me or work for me. So I will need to bring in some guys that are coming here because of me 
you know, we are going to need that, but we have to indoctrinate them in what our culture is going to be, teach them how it's going to be, teach them how we're going to behave every day, how we're going to coach the players, what we're going to do. And I think the ones that fit that are going to stay and the ones that won't, we'll make a decision about. We'll figure out what we got to do, what's best for the program. You know, from now on, I don't know how it's been in the past. I would imagine it's been this way, but there's nobody, no thing is bigger than the program. Every decision you make now, it is what's best for the team and the program, and then what's best for the individual. That's dealing with players on a, on a personal level, with playing time or whatever decisions, you know, disciplinary decisions or whatever. We've got to do what's best for the team, then what's best for the individual. It's the same thing with coaches. We have to do what's best for the program, best for the team. And then we have to do what's best for the individual. Because if we're not, then we're going to give the kids a shortened experience, and we're not doing that. And we want to make sure the kids have an authentic, real experience. That's everything that they deserve. With the season set to kick off about a month away from now, is there a timeline you'd like to have in place in terms yeah, of – Yeah, for the guys we're bringing in, we want to get them in as fast as we can, you know. And it would not – it would be very, uh, I would say, borderline ignorant to come in and go scorched earth on everybody if we're mm-hmm. planning on playing. I mean, that's yeah. – so we got to work through it. It's – this is uh, – you know, you look at your calendar and you have your first 90 days set and it's, man, there's none of the hours in the day. I need like 30 hour days. That's what I need to get everything done and, and to get everything set up. But we got to be efficient with our time. We, we've got recruits coming this weekend. We've got this, we'll have our first padded practice on Saturday. But we got a lot we got to do. We got to teach them schemes, adopt the schemes that we're going to do and make sure that we're meeting as coaches and we're all on the same page and we're ready to get going. But there's going to be a lot of work. A lot of work, and it's got to go fast. Coming in as an offensive coordinator, this has been a, primarily an offense that has been a run-first offense over the mm-hmm. years. I guess, what is your offensive philosophy that you bring to Maryville College? Yeah, I think we, we've always, everywhere I've been, it's about two things. It's walking the line block and walking the quarterback room. You tailor everything around that, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different ways to run plays. You know, my last year, at Huntington, we lined up in four wide almost exclusively, right? And we used our quarterback as an extra ball carrier because he was the best player in the country, right? So we did everything. I've had big tight ends at, at center. We've been more two tight ends, and we've had some guys that we threw the ball down the field a bunch. It just we have to marry what we're doing to the scheme uh, or to the players, right? Whatever they can do well, we have to fit our scheme within that. Our system has enough avenues that it can take that we figure out what the guys can do, who the players are that we can count on, and the ones that are gonna make plays, we gotta let them make them. We gotta give them the ball and give them an opportunity. You know, it's not, it's a it's a simple formula, but it's hard to get done. And it's, you know, it's, it's a simple recipe that's hard to cook. However you wanna phrase it, it's not rocket science, but it will take a lot of work. And as you get down to diagnose, and especially when it's gonna happen fast, you gotta diagnose what you got. This is obviously a unique situation in the fact that you come into a spring season where you'll actually be able to play live opponents instead of yourselves. Mm-hmm. Do you think that'll be beneficial in terms of knowing what you have heading into next fall? I, I, there, without question, right? This is a huge opportunity for us. I, I, you know, The message it'll be to the team, and this is what I told the, a couple of the leaders on when I interviewed with them, is that this is going to give them something that they typically don't have in Division Three football, and that's a traditional spring practice. Spring practice. With pads, football's a developmental game. The only way to develop is by playing 11 on 11. That's the only way to truly develop playing football. So they're going to get a chance to develop and play. We're just going to have scrimmages at the end. It's like we have games at the end against other teams. You know, the biggest thing that I want to see this spring is competitive character and improvement. I want to see guys that play as hard as they can, that keep believing and improve throughout the process. Because this is, like, it is borderline unprecedented. I don't have anybody to call and ask them, what would you do in this situation? Because they are all doing the same thing. We're just going to talk to in circles to each other, right? I don't have anybody to call to ask them, hey, how do you handle the most intense recruiting season you have while you're also game planning? Nobody knows. Ask the basketball coaches. They're the only ones that have experienced that, you know, because as you look at the timeline of Division Three, normally with football, we're all recruiting, all recruiting. That's all it is right now. Right. So it's everything is completely different. It's turned up on its head. We have to just get in, look under the hood, see what we have and uh, get to work and, and build a system 
around the players we have. Then it'll give us a chance to get a good evaluation on what we have and continue with recruiting and build towards what we hope will be a very exciting fall. But don't mistake this now. Don't we want to win the games. Okay. We're playing to win. Don't, 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 I don't, don't mistake what I'm saying. We're going to play to win. There's a scoreboard there for a reason. If they're going to turn it on, then we plan to try to light it up. You mentioned culture earlier. I guess what is the culture that you want to create within this program? And I guess off of that two, yeah. three, four, five years from now, where do you see this program being? Yeah, I, I want this to be a program that is continually competing for conference championships and playoff berths and competing and winning playoff games. That That's ultimately what I want it to be, right? Mm -hmm. But my vision for the program is that it is a program and playing football at Maryville is one of the most incredible experiences of our players' lives. That's it. I don't want it to be the best experience of their life. I want all of them to get married and have kids and have a great time, you know, all that stuff. I don't want this to be the best thing that they do. I want them to do more stuff that's great, but I want this to be a springboard for opportunity. I want to, I want this to be a program and through their experiences here that creates men that are finishers, finish raising their children, finish their marriages, and just learn how to be uh, selfless and courageous. And courage is the absence of self and men that understand that and create men that understand that, right? Now, how do we do that? Every day, core values, right? The core values we'll have, because scheme changes, right? If you're smart, that it, even at places like Alabama, where they get the best players in the country, the scheme changes on a year-to-year -year basis. That's your job as a coach, right? To put the scheme around the players, but the core values can change, right? The first one is, is love. And I'll say this all the time to the players, the team that loves each other the most, it's a team that'll win. And that, how do you get to where you have a team that loves each other? It starts out with respect. And if they come in and at least initially respect each other, because we all should respect each other, right? And in a family, then we can begin to trust each other. And if you have a team that trusts each other, then you have a team that loves itself, loves each other, right? And you got all those things together the team that loves each other the most and has those connections, that's usually the team that wins. The second one's accountability. And each of us will need all of us. The players will be accountable to the coaches. The coaches are accountable to the players and the players are accountable to each other. The best cultures, right? The best thing you'll ever see is when a player does something that goes against the grain of the culture and not what we're asking for. And he gets corrected by another player. That's when you know you've made it, right? When the kids police themselves, okay? The third one is hard work. Right. And it, the football is not a credit card sport. Right. It's it, you pay cash and you pay on Saturdays. That's it. Whatever you got, whatever you've earned, that's what you get. You don't get what you want. You get what you earn. There's no buying on layaway in football. OK. The fourth one is faith. And what I mean is I want our players to have faith in themselves and to have faith in their coaches and to have faith that they're recruited here for a purpose. That every kid we recruit and every kid on our team has a role and is here for a reason and sees value within that role, right? And they have faith that what we're asking them to do, they can fulfill the role for the team. If we do all those things, you'll get competitive excellence. And that's the ability to be their best when they need to be the best. That's really fun, right? It's really fun when you're playing an important game, championship game, and you have games that are, that are intense and you're playing a worthy opponent and you know you're going to get their best effort, but deep down you know you've earned the right to give them yours too. That's a lot of fun. That that's special. You mentioned having recruited this area. How beneficial is the program to be miles away to be able to pull kids from Knox County and Blount County, or just kind of seen its talent pool grow in recent years? And also, how do you balance that with a national recruiting focus? Yeah, you know, I think we need to make sure that we're we're really hammering. What would I would term our end state, which would be within like a four hour radius of, of Knoxville, right? You look at where our league plays games. We play games in Virginia. We play games in North Carolina. It would behoove us to recruit there because the kids can go home, right? We'll play games in Georgia. Some of the best high school football in the country is played in the Atlanta suburbs, right? And we, we got to go down there and recruit really hard. We'll play games in Alabama. We need to recruit there. But there is such good football and such good alumni that are coaching these football programs in Blount County and in Knox County and in the state of Tennessee, we have to tap that resource. That, that is the most important thing that 
when we're talking about why people go to private college and small college to play football, part of it is on the back end, the investment of understanding what they can be like, right? What the college produces and what the football program produces. Well, it is huge for our football alumni that are coaching right now in Blount County, in Knox County, in Tennessee, in North Carolina, in South Carolina, all those guys are coaching everywhere, that their players see what Maryville College, is, Maryville College produces. And they're like, I want some of that. That's the best selling point that we have. The best one. Our players and our alumni that are produced is going to be better than any quick pitch and anything that I can say. Anything. Because that's what you're paying for when you're talking about a private college experience. I think that's the only questions I have for Ben, but sorry, I do have one for you. Um, as a having done this national search now for however many months it's been now, I guess what stood out about Ben that kind of made him the right candidate? Um, so for, for me, I, the whole time I've been very consistent, um, looking for a real change agent as a leader, um, someone that can not only recruit, but retain our student athletes. And I think early on in the process, I definitely connected with Coach Fox because we have a very similar passion for that student experience that he was talking about, uh, making sure that this is an experience that is one of the best experiences of students' lives. So. I've grown up in this business in small college athletics. Um, that is my everyday goal, you know, to make a difference and make sure that we're creating an experience. Um, and as I've, you know, slowly taking over um, the athletic department here, that's just been a goal of mine every day is make, what can we do to make our department better? It's gonna make our lives of our student athletes better um, where they can go and turn and make a difference in the world. So um, we connected on that fairly quickly, I think, um, from our opening conversations. And um, he's worked at two schools that, um, you know, for us, one is a competitor of ours, um, conference foe. And then, you know, Center College is a college, you know, that we would aspire to be. We, you know, that's that's the goal here is, is to get better. And um, his connections to the community, um, especially when it comes to recruiting, um, that was a, a really big, um, plus for us and when we were looking for a coach. So um, I am more than thrilled. I was, I was thrilled finally to kind of share that news yeah. you know, to our staff because it's been, uh, like you said, it's been, I think it's been eight weeks. It's been like exactly eight weeks. So, um, you know, it was a, a long search. And like I said, we had so many candidates and, um, you know, from the beginning, just with his background and, you know, the connection to the area, he really stood out for us. Hey ben, this is Jeff up in Johnson City. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, a uh, couple of things. Obviously, uh, up here, uh, sort of following up on what Troy was asking, how important is this Tri-Cities area as far as recruiting for you guys? I have a major chip on my shoulder from being from Northeast Tennessee and uh, that there's a lot of good football players up there that deserve a chance to go play in college. And I want this to be a place that they think, yeah, you know what, I need to go there. And it's a place that I can go have a great experience, get a world-class education, compete really hard, and become the best version of myself that I can be. And, you know, it's convenient for me. My mother would love for me to recruit them all the time. She thinks I'd stay up there and stay with her. You know, they'd love for me to do that. But it's it's a big deal recruiting in Northeast Tennessee. And, it, it you know, that's part of what I enjoyed about being at center. I was able to rekindle a lot of those relationships with guys that I played for, I played against as players and as coaches. And it's just really, really fun. I've gotten a ton of, of contact from those guys and, and heard a lot of just really positive, positive things. And it's been a lot of fun uh, to know that. And I have the same response to all of them. Looking forward to seeing you. We need you guys. Send them to us. We need them. And that's not changing. Yeah, and a follow up on that, uh, you was talking about how much of an influence still is Coach Jenkins to you, even, you know, to this day? Yeah, you know, it's, I always love going to go see Coach Jenkins and go by and go, go back to Daniel Boone and see. It's just, it is impressive what they've been able to do and how the facilities have changed, that he's gotten support to get done and how consistently they play and the big and strong. And he plays a style that fits the school 
And that's – it's the best thing that could have happened to Daniel Boone football was Coach Jenkins coming back. And I'm glad I got to be his first quarterback. You know, it was really special for me to be able to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've enjoyed it. You know, we keep in touch. He texted me today and uh, sent me another guy. Sent me another one. I said, David, we'll take him. Come on, send him down. So, it's just uh, – it's a lot of fun, and, and he's just been a huge influence. And I know that he supports me. I know that, uh, that Mr. Good, the athletic director, supports me. Um, you know, it was just a special time. A lot of good people in that community care about me. And that's humbling. And then now Mark Fox is retired and stuff, so he can be down there, I guess, and drive you crazy a little bit. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he gonna need. Yeah, he thinks he needs a sideline pass, so he needs a way back pass. I'm, I told, I, you know, I've always said if I ever get a head coaching job, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get those headphones. I'm not gonna have wireless. I'm gonna get the wired headphones, and I'm gonna give him a cord that doesn't go anywhere, and he can just hold that and walk around, and that way he, he you know, he won't go anywhere i'll have wireless ones and i'll tape a, like a water hose to it or something and he'll think he's the cord guy like coach harbaugh has at michigan they walk around you know it'd be old school but he'll, he'd love it um no we're thrilled you know it's just a, it's a fun time that's part of the draw is being back closer to to my parents and then my my wife she has some family in knoxville as well we're close to the airport an easy drive to get to so she can go see her parents and her parents can come see us and it's just a really a really good fit all the way around. So, and I was better than find a house down here, though. Better not. <laughs> I was wondering what was uh, your dad's reaction, though, when he first found out you got that job. Uh, he was excited. He he's excited, and uh, you know he's he's thrilled. And it's to be successful. I, I've said this to everybody and people when they ask me to be successful in small college athletics, unless you and coaching unless you are like have a name in your your family that's in like the coaching profession that you get into it is critical you have support of your parents that understand the deal and are supportive of you chasing your dream that means more to me than they'll ever know because that was unwavering you know it's it's I, I my wife and I my wife is an engineer she was an engineer by trade from WashU, and I have an I have an MBA and a BSBA at WashU, so and my MBA from Bryant. So we've got all these high power degrees, and she's a school teacher, and I'm a college football coach. And I think a lot of people are like, "Why would you do that?" But we've had unwavering support from our parents, and that hasn't changed. It's just, it's just been another manifestation of that. Jeff, it's just it's exactly what it is. And it's, I can't thank them enough. You know, when you, when you GA and you get your first job and you're all excited, man, I'm going to be division one football coach. I'm GA at Bryant university. And they told me my salary is $3,000 for the year. I about died. Like what, what I forgot. I, I, I forgot my pin number for my, my debit card. My first semester, I'd park my car and never started it. I, I it would just go crank it a little bit. I didn't have to get gas. I didn't know my whole season. I went the whole season, never got gas. I, I forgot my pin number. So, we're used to being poor and having a lot of support from your parents is a big deal when that happens, when you're dealing with that. You know, my third year, I got, a, I, I, dig them, I hit the lottery, man. I got up to 7,000, couldn't tell me nothing. So I was balling. So ramen noodles are not part of your diet nowadays? Yeah, we're out. We're out on that. We're out on that. We're, we're gone. We, we're done with that. So I still eat at the calf about everywhere I work, though. I'm just used to it, man. It's convenient. It's convenient. I wouldn't know what to do. I pack lunch. People like pack for lunch or go to eat for lunch. I've eaten at a cafeteria for like 20 years, so I have no idea where to even begin. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations, Abraham. I appreciate that. Thank you. Coach Fox, I'm a former Division Three baseball player, baseball coach. Division Three is special. It takes a special person to dedicate their lives to this, this division. What does Division Three mean to you, and how are you going to implement that philosophy into your program? Yeah, I, I think Division Three gives our players a chance to have a collegiality that they may not experience at other places, that they can be involved in clubs and organizations on campus, that they don't have to sacrifice anything, right? That they don't have to give up anything, right? Experiences are different depending on the level, right? And 
I, I get all that. But I think what's important for us is that they don't sacrifice anything, including the authenticity of the college football experience, that our players get a real college football experience, that they really work hard, and they re it's really intense, and they really know what it is. Uh, but they also really intern, and they really are planning on graduating, and they really are involved in clubs and organizations on campus and other leadership opportunities, but they don't miss out on anything. That's what we want. That, to me, is what Division Three gives you an opportunity to be. It's not just, you know, we're going to be a great academics. Like academics, that'll be a huge piece of it. The student affairs, just life, is a huge piece of it. And then athletics is going to be a piece of it. And all three of those things fitting together and not having to sacrifice anything, that to me is what makes Division Three special.